How much control do you actually have over reality? Keep watching. This is Life Mastery Jim. I'm Damon Cart, and I teach people just like you cutting edge NLP processes and techniques so that you can master your life and take charge of your destiny. So if that sounds good, make sure you click that subscribe button right down here so you can get these videos on a regular basis. So be forewarned, this can get a little complicated and I'm trying to make it as simple as I possibly can. But if it's not making a whole lot of sense to you, there is a link in the description below. If you click that link, I am holding a free webinar on Tuesday. And in that webinar, I will take you through some exercises that you can get an, an experiential understanding of this rather than just hearing me talk about it. Over the several years of doing lots of NLP training, neurolinguistic programming, and doing a lot of practice and then also teaching it and coaching it, it has been amazing to discover what reality is really made up of. So by the end of this video, you're going to have a much better understanding of what actually do you have within your control of the actual reality that you live in. Now, before I get into this, if you have any comments or questions, make sure you put them right down here in the comments section and I will respond to you. So the three things that I'm going to cover in this video is first of all, that your reality is not based on what you think it is. It's actually based on your perception. The second part that I'm going to cover is that your relationship to yourself isn't really a relationship at all. And then the third part is I'm going to go into where NLP and Eastern philosophy meet because it actually gets very, very interesting. So let's get started. Reality is based on your perception, not reality itself. And you might be thinking, no, that's not true, Damon. I know think there are certain things that are true and there are certain things that I just perceive a certain way or I have certain beliefs. But here's how it really works. You have your five senses. Now, people like to argue that there's a sixth sense or there's extra senses. Have at it and you can argue that all you want. All we know of is that we have five senses. So those themselves are their own sort of filters. They're their own sort of limitations because there was once upon a time, many millions of years ago, that this idea of an eye or the eye itself, <laughs> however you want to say it, eyes didn't exist. And gradually through evolution, there was a way of bringing cells together and I guess somehow in neurology and nerves that suddenly you have this thing called eyesight. Until then, no living organism had eyesight. So you have these five senses that have been developed to take in the reality around you, take in objective sensory-based information. There could well be more information out there that we just don't have the senses to detect. So there's your first level of perception. You can only perceive what your neurology can bring into it. You can only perceive what you can sense. So as you're receiving this information, you have to manage it somehow. You can't be focused on all this information at one time. And this is why we have this sort of split between a consciousness and an unconsciousness. So everything that is not in your conscious awareness, we can say is in your unconscious. And that can be anything from your heart beating. You know, we don't consciously make our heart beat to just memories that you've had that you don't think of anymore. They're not front of mind. They're not in your conscious awareness, but they're in there somewhere and they do affect your consciousness. So as all this information comes in, you find a way to manage it. I'll go into much more detail about this in another video about how we delete, distort and generalize information, which is what NLP is based on. But anyway, we'll just go to the, this idea that we manage this information. We can't process it all at once. all at once. We can't be thinking about it all at once. So we turn it into a map, a map of reality. And so that map, just like any other map that we use, is useful because we can get an abbreviated version of the territory. And so now we have some sort of greater perspective of it. If you think about, you look at a map on your phone, it's not the actual territory. There's the map and then there's the territory. And there's no reason why you'd want to completely recreate the territory and it would not be useful anymore. The map is useful because we can hold it in our hand and get a maybe a bird's eye perspective or we can have a different perspective 
of the map, but it's not going to, going to be the total perspective. So that perspective, that perception is how we perceive things in our reality. We have an internal map. It's not everything. It's generalized. It's distorted. It's deleted. Our information is deleted, but we, we create a sort of generalized map of what we think our reality is. And this just doesn't have to do with how we perceive the world around us. This also has to do with how we perceive ourselves. And also how we perceive ourselves is also what we project onto the world around us. So what we believe to be true inevitably affects who we think we are. And who we think we are inevitably affects what we believe our reality is that we're living in. Now this brings me to the second part, which is you are not really having in a relationship with yourself. And this is so common in self development, self improvement, self help. We hear things like, well, I need to love myself more. Or you'll hear these gurus say, you need more self respect, or you need to love yourself more. And when I hear this, I know where that comes from. I, I know that feeling. I know that sense. I've, I've been there. I've been in that trapped in that duality where I feel like there is sort of myself and then this other self. And then there's this other self that sort of observes my true self and makes comments on it. And I'm sure most people have that experience. It's sort of how we're critical of ourselves. You know, you have that voice in the, in the background that's kind of commenting on everything. And when we entertain these ideas of like my relationship to myself, what we're really talking about is we're talking about a relationship to our perceived self. It's not actually real. It's a concept. There's no way that you could have a relationship with yourself. That means you would have to have a part of you that is outside of you that's sort of relating to the you that's here. And that just doesn't make any sense. But we do have, we do create a self concept. Some people refer to that as the ego. Some people refer to that as your self image, but we forget that it's conceptual. We forget that it's, that it's not real. And we start buying into this idea that there really is sort of this relationship to self. And that actually creates a lot more problems than it solves. And now this brings me to this connection between NLP and Eastern thinking or, or Eastern philosophy. Now, before I got into NLP, I had gone headfirst into Zen Buddhism and non-duality and I learned many wonderful things in those philosophies. You can even call them religions or disciplines. And at the end of it, though, I get to a point where it just it wasn't fulfilling. It didn't answer the questions that I wanted answered, primarily because what I was looking for was something more practical, more applicable. Like I, it's great to be able to sit and I used to do this sit up for I used to sit for three hours meditating. And yes, it felt good. Yes, I had some insights, but it wasn't really creating the, life, creating the life that I wanted to live. And I really wasn't actually feeling better about myself. I was still sort of caught in that duality of self and other and me commenting on myself and then me saying, okay, well, I'm not happy with myself and I'm not sure that I love myself. And am I showing myself enough self-respect? I, I was still caught in that, even though philosophically, I understood that that was creating all of my problems. And where I think many people go wrong, not just in NLP, but in self, all self-development and self-improvement is this idea that I'm going to sort of cultivate. I'm going to, I'm going to clean up. I'm going to empower this self that I'm having a relationship with. And actually that usually leads to arrogance that leads to greater egotism. And it just feeds that duality even more, which creates more conflict and creates more problems because I'm trying to push and create and cultivate myself, which is just an idea. And it's not working because I look around me and my life hasn't changed and it's not becoming the successful life that I wanted it to be or that I, I, I hoped it would be. And others aren't perceiving me as this great pristine person that I feel like I'm trying to cultivate through affirmations and through getting outside validation from accomplishing goals and being successful. For some reason, it's just not working. So what is the answer? What am I getting at here? And you might be thinking, Damon, you're just making me feel worse about this. I do all this stuff in personal development and I do the Zen and the, the Buddhism and the non-duality stuff. And you're basically telling me that's all wrong. Well, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm actually not. There is a way and there are, and there's multiple ways. And 
a lot of what is in personal development and self-help and Zen and non-duality, it's all there. All, all that you need is actually there. The most important thing to understand is that there is no relationship to self. You are it. <laughs> there is no way that you can actually step outside of yourself and judge yourself and judge your worth and say that you are of high worth or of low worth. There is no self and other. And the more you understand this, the more you dissolve this idea about there being a self and other and you just be and you just become, then there's no conflict. There's, there's no back and forth. And that's ultimately what I think duality and Buddhism is trying to get across. But if there's ever this ideal that you're trying to become and that you're trying to push yourself into becoming and that you're trying to sort of cultivate, there's going to be that pushback unless, unless you understand that there is no self-image, there is no, or this generalization you make about yourself, this self-concept is exactly that, a concept. And when you fully understand that, then changing it becomes a lot easier. Changing yourself when you realize it's not real, well, it becomes very easy. <laughs> it becomes what you want it to be. And when you make those changes in, in yourself and you don't take it too serious, that will affect your reality. Your reality will, you will have the experience of your reality shifting and changing. Now, this does come with a warning because done the wrong way, it can make you delusional and detached from what we call reality. Of course, what I just explained that, you know, the reality is made up anyway, but there is a certain accuracy. There is an accuracy where, you know, if I see a tree and I point to it and I say, that's a tree. Well, it is a tree and I can, we can devolve into this or digress into this. Well, it's only a tree because we call it a tree, blah, blah, blah. And that's not, that doesn't, that's not useful, but there is a certain amount of accuracy. So think about the map again and the territory. If the map is inaccurate, it's not useful to you. So we go back to thinking in terms of more about usefulness. You want to create a useful sense of self all the while understanding that it's not actually real. It has more to do with what you pay attention to in your life. So you have all of these experiences. If you put more attention on the mistakes that you've made and on the problems that have uh, happened in your life, you're likely that's, that becomes your reality. So therefore you have a problematic life uh, with lots of issues and lots of mistakes that you're making. However, if you put more of your attention on what is working in your life, and where you want to go in your life and what you value, what you want, who you want to become. And at the same time, acknowledging that you're imperfect, that you will make mistakes. Then this is the, this is the road. This is the route to getting to what I'm talking about, where you dissolve that idea that there are two parts of you or that there's self and then there's other, and then there's that other that's always ju judging yourself. So ultimately what we're doing here is cultivating a perception. You want to cultivate a perception based on your actual experiences so that it creates the reality around you that is conducive to the person you want to become while at the same time creating the you that you want to be and that you want to become based on actual experiences and based on who you want to become and the life you want to create going forward. And as complicated as this might have sounded, it's not actually all that complicated. It's actually a lot simpler if you know what you're doing. If you found this a bit confusing, I understand. I, I was there. And if you want to learn more about this, it really ne you really need to experience it. It's not something that we can intellectualize too much. This is why listening to certain gurus or listening to uh, Eastern philosophy, while it feels good, it sounds good, but it doesn't always seem to, to come together, it's really something you need to experience. So if you want to experience that, then you want to sign up for this free webinar that I'm doing. It's in a few days. And if you go to, to the description right down here below, you'll see that there's a link. Click on that link and you'll see how, they, how you can sign up for this free webinar. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the bell so you'll be notified when I put new videos out. And last but not least, if you can think of a friend or a family member who you think would benefit from this video, make sure you share it with them. Take care.